Hello everybody. How do I maximize this? Ah, here we go. Um, today, today I am feeling a little bit tired. Maybe it's the words. So I would like I would like to do a different lesson. I'm I'm not going to paint because I'm not a hundred percent well. Uh, I think it's the start of a flu or a cold or something like that. But I didn't want to you know not to see you guys I want to make sure everybody is still learning um, what you must learn so I've got a surprise for you this ugly 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 book costs over 5,000 pounds in uh, paint yeah so I'm going to show you today I'm going to unveil a lot of things that I think you will appreciate today's lesson is about the choice of watercolor pigments and there's so much in the market um, hi Alda and Raji good to see you as usual and Diana thank you thanks I will get well very soon uh, yeah it's just a little sore throat you know nothing important um, I was meant to go to a party today with with uh, you know it was a it was a, a baby's birthday and I just couldn't do it I'm sorry Vanessa for not being there today um, so yeah like like I was telling you there there is over 5,000 pounds of paint rubbed onto this really ugly book <laughs> it's not charming it's not glamorous but you might appreciate this lesson so again today's lesson will be exclusively on watercolor paints which brands you should get or not and for which color first things first there is no such thing as one brand that i vouch for um, across the spectrum what i'm trying to say is that uh, different brands make different colors better than other brands you might want a certain shade of blue from a certain brand and then if you want a certain shade of green you go to a different brand a different make there is no such thing as far as i'm aware if you know of it do let me know there is no such thing as one brand that is the best for all the colors okay i'm just going to raise the camera ever so slightly because this this is feeling just so ridiculously low you could almost see the hairs in my nostrils you know let's not do that i want to save you the spectacle so i'm about to open the book and unveil the, the secrets that this book contains i'm just about to open it this is just so not practical it's a very big book and I'll have to hold it like this and then some pages are gonna um, flip over and drop ridiculously now with a little bit of luck I can tilt the camera down and show you directly ha ha this is easier now what you are looking at is just different acrylic mediums and today's lesson uh, will not be on acrylic mediums so I'm just going to quickly flip over but you, you you can have a you can have a quick look a quick peek onto some of the secrets that I contain on this book you know <laughs> just a quick peek lots of mesmerizing things lots of textures some sparkling things can you see the sparkle can you see the diamond dust yeah yeah they call it diamond dust but actually looks like cheap plastic anyway the joys of marketing I'm about to start with the colors and I have to veil it before I unveil it let me hide this from you because we're gonna have a quick chat first now I need everybody to have pen and paper and write down notes this is not the type of video that you just look at write down some notes it's going to save you thousands of pounds um, buying horrible paints that you don't need <laughs> don't listen don't listen to the romance you know and and to what manufacturers have to tell you uh, yes Raji I did create this book each time I bought uh, a sample of each time I would buy a paint I would 
uh, paint a sample. Now I'm going to start with the first brand. This is actually acrylics. It's made by Old Holland. It's called New Masters. And this is the glossiest white paint that I found uh, so far. I don't think I can show you on camera. So you will have to trust me. This paint is extremely, extremely glossy. And that's not showing um, on camera for some reason. I'm trying to get the angle right. Ah, you can see a little shimmer there. Okay, okay, depending on the angle. Can you see the sheen? Yes, you can. So this is the shiniest uh, white that I found so far. If you guys are into glossiness, then that's the brand to go for on your titanium white. So this one is called New Masters Titanium White Extra Opaque. I'm going to show you again the gloss level. Extremely glossy uh, white paint, okay? If you want gloss paints, that's what you buy. If you want matte paints, then pretty much any of these will do. Now we have some whites and we have some, um, you know, some some uh, grays and so on. Let's start with the whites. As you can see down here, there is a brand called FW, and it cracked. It cracked. Um, it's a good brand if you paint thinly, but it it just behaves terribly the moment you paint a little bit thickly. So this is a problem, you know, because you, you buy an acrylic paint, acrylics are not meant to crack, and then suddenly uh, your lovely FW paint cracked. All right? It's the one in the bottom right corner. You don't want that paint according to me. Now, each time you read, for example, at the bottom right corner, it says Kramer Titanium White plus Casein. Now, Casein is a binder it comes from milk, from cheese, so it's not really vegan. Um, I did it myself. You can buy it in crystals and make yourself. And the advantage of casein paints is that they dry uh, super flat, super matte. They behave a bit like gouache or, or watercolor, but it's again a different medium. And casein paints uh, dry pretty much waterproof. So it has that advantage over traditional gouache or traditional uh, watercolor. Hi Sangeeta, hello. So, more paints I have to show you. This is going to be a spectacular art class. Look at, um, on the top right corner, look at the spectacular granulation by Daniel Smith, hematite. This is real hematite. It's genuine. You know, we're not talking about um, an imitation, we are talking about the real paints. Daniel Smith will make a watercolor that granulates like that. So this is the, the real deal. This is the genuine thing. Let me just drop the lights a bit further so you guys can see um, with more intensity. I'm just moving the lights into a better place. And, and again, with a little bit of luck, you might even see the sheen level of the paint <laughs> because I'm very disappointed with the matteness. Now they're behaving way too much for uh, what I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, just keep asking, okay? Make sure that this lesson uh, is profitable for everyone. Now back to the grays, because we have, we have a lot of colors to look at. The hematite is a spectacular texture, so I really want you to appreciate this and enjoy this. It's really beautiful. Look at the golden color right here. This is a neutral gray. You guys remember when I was telling you that um, the neutral grays do exist, all right? So it's going to be important to have a few neutral grays. These are acrylics by Golden, but if you paint thinly, they, you can intermix them with watercolor. So you can mix watercolors and acrylics as long as you paint very, very thinly. On the bottom, just down there, you've got slate. This is real slate, you know, the stone. And look at the lovely granulation that you get. I bought it from Kramer as a powder. And then I mixed it with what? It's written what? Casein. 
case in. So now you know you can make your own paints, you know. And another very important thing about grinding your own colors is that usually a granulation tends to be stronger when you make your own paints. So granulation is this texture, all right? It's very rough. You see all the specks, you see all the dots. This is granulation. When you make your own paints at home, usually the granulation is stronger uh, when you make your own watercolor paints, that's what I mean. Now, before we change page, um, I would just like to say that zinc white, like the ones down here, zinc white um, is perfectly fine in watercolor or in acrylic. I keep doing campaigns against zinc white, but that's in oils, okay? Remember that you can use uh, zinc white in watercolor or in acrylics. Sometimes zinc white is also called mixing white, like this one we have over here, made by Turner uh, acrylic gouache paints. So mixing white, pigment white 4, PW4, it's the same as zinc white. It's also PW4, pigment white 4, okay? So make sure you guys learn this. Uh, it's going to be extremely helpful. And now we're starting with color, with bright colors. And the first one, it's hidden here in the corner. <laughs> so you're going to see lots of... Um, it looks greener on camera than in reality. In reality, it's a really bright, beautiful yellow. It's made by Turner. And notice that it cracked when it was applied thickly. So these acrylic gouache paints are not meant to be applied thickly. You have to paint them thinly. All right, any doubts so far? If you have doubts, uh, please ask them. And now look at all the comparison, all the different yellows. I told you this was going to cost money and it did. It's thousands of pounds in this little book, thousands. Now we're going to go nearer. There's even colors in this book that are not sold anymore. They're just, um, you cannot get them. So in terms of the brightest yellow, and you cannot trust the camera for that, you will have to trust me, <laughs> not the camera. It's difficult to say which one is the absolute brightest, but if you are going if you are going, for example, the Windsor Newton Lemon Yellow is um, this one there in the corner. It's extremely dull. All right. The Windsor Newton Lemon Yellow is the dullest yellow that we have uh, on camera in this precise moment. Extremely dull, which is still helpful. You know, if you're if you're if you're searching for dull colors, that's the color to go for. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Just be aware that if you buy bright colors, you can always make them dull. But if you buy dull colors, you cannot make them look bright. I mean, you can use little tricks and so on, whatever. But um, yeah, it's not the same. Now, in terms of the absolute brightest color, I'm going to look at them intently for a second or two. And I would say that Turner Cadmium Yellow is a competing, um, it's much brighter live than what I see on camera. This camera really dulls yellows. So I'd say the yellow made by Turner is spectacularly bright if you want a bright color or if you want a slightly warmer uh, tone more orangey most probably the Windsor Newton acrylics azul yellow medium or the Turner permanent yellow I'm gonna show you both now right here so uh, those two are extremely bright colors as well. And remember, you can use acrylics very diluted and they'll behave like watercolor. The difference is that after it's dry, the, the watercolors made with acrylics will be w waterproof. Now let's shift into slightly more orange colors. And I want to show you a color that is extremely toxic. So this is medieval 
the LED tin yellow. Let me go nearer to the camera. Okay. I bought these ones uh, at Cornelison's. You know, these are paints that you buy um, as a powder. And then I mixed with my own casein. These three colors that you see in here, they're all toxic. So LED tin yellow light, LED tin yellow dark, and then ore pigment. These are extremely toxic colors. They were used in the Middle Ages. And I don't recommend you use them unless you're using them for very specific things. Um, example, when you paint icons, it's traditional to use this type of uh, pigment. I don't recommend it though, because not only it's toxic, it's also fugitive. Look at the color. That used to be bright yellow. It's already changing. This this sample was painted maybe three years ago or four, and it's already shifting to a very grayish brown. Okay? So be aware that some of these colors are not light fast. They are not light fast. Now, yeah, an ore pigment is just a, a poison. I mean, you can kill uh, you can kill people with these things. You know, you just mix a bit of yellow on their soup, pretend it's saffron. <laughs> you know, I don't recommend you work with these pigments. Um, so Diana, if the Turner paints, if they're watercolor or acrylic, they are acrylic gouache. I don't know. You know what's a gouache? Gouache is like poster paint. So Turner acrylics, they dry, they are acrylics, but they dry looking like gouache. They dry looking like poster paints. That means they don't have that plastic sheen of acrylic paints. Okay, they 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 are matte. Uh, let me show you an example here. So wherever you see um, Turner, it's going to be matte. By the way, there is a line of sheen in the middle. I poured a drop of varnish across all the paint samples just to see if the color shifted while it was um, glossy or matte. It changes a little bit. But essentially, Turner acrylic paints, they are acrylic, so they dry waterproof, but they're totally uh, flat. They're totally matte, like gouache paint. Uh, Sangeeta, today's lesson is not about mediums because we're hardly going to have time uh, to go through uh, these uh, paints unless you have a specific question. I, I cannot cover mediums today because it's, it's going to be a lecture by itself. But if you have specific questions, then I'm happy to answer. Now, we're going to jump into the orange shades. And these are beautiful. I'll, I'm very proud of these samples because there's even um, colors in the book that are not sold anymore. Example, Windsor & Newton Chrome Orange. This was the old version of the cadmium orange colors. This was the paint used in the 19th century. And it's not, fu it's not really light fast. This orange is a little bit fugitive. So as a result, it was discontinued. I still had an old tube. And again, chrome, chrome um, is toxic. So it's the type of paints, thankfully, we don't use anymore because we have better colors, you know? Like if you compare, let's say, if you compare that chrome dull color, which by the way, it's already shifting very quickly or the medieval Realgar in here, which is also shifting because it's not very light fast. And it's toxic, by the way, those two are toxic. And now compare them with the brilliant, brilliant cadmium colors or, uh, or just, I mean, cadmium colors are so stunningly beautiful, you know, they're so bright and they're just so vivid. When you compare the new colors with the old ones, there is no comparison. In terms of gloss levels, if you're looking after gloss, I'd say the glossiest of all is this one. Oh, let me try to find the angle so you can see. Oh, almost, 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 almost. Aha, there. So this is, God, there. So this is the glossiest uh, orange paint that I have here. It's made by Golden. 
and it's a transparent shade it's called transparent pyrrole orange and of course if you don't want gloss then don't use um, this color just use standard watercolors or standard acrylics uh, Sangeeta, you've got a very good question. What would you use matte acrylics for? You said, are they suitable for a particular subject? Well, matte acrylics is just for, I can't say they're s suitable for a specific subject. That's, that's a bit um, subjective, you know. It's a bit like you can't really say it's for a, a subject, but it's definitely suitable for a specific uh, aesthetic. Some people prefer acrylic paints to dry full matte. Others prefer glossy. Now, generally speaking, this is just my take on it, my personal take. Don't, you know, uh, don't believe me, not even one second. I tend to prefer gloss if the painting is extremely dark or with vibrant rich colors so for example um, a very dark crimson red with a very dark emerald green uh, with a very dark Prussian blue you see this type of deep 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 colors and and still vibrant I go for gloss I tend to prefer matte in practically everything else so uh, if a painting is very pastel if, if it's a pale painting or and or if the colors are muted if they're grayish i much prefer matte uh, i i find that gloss is distracting so when would i go for gloss i'd say if you want to emphasize the transparency of the paint so let me show you that transparent colors any of these two are see-through they are transparent they always look much better when they're glossy. You see much more the, um, the transparency of the paint, you know? Any of these two are transparent. If they were matte, they would look chalkier. For example, um, these ones are matte, those two. And it just doesn't have the depth of color of these darks. I mean, these dark shades are beautiful uh, when they're glossy. Does this make any sense? Indeed, Sangeeta, um, it's similar to old masters paintings where um, painters like Rembrandt or Leonardo or any of those painters pretty much, generally they went for gloss because the colors were dark and deep. You know, they, they, they were trying to attain depth. Why? Because paint, paint in general, is much better at representing shadows than at representing light. Uh, if you look at the spectrum of colors that paint can give you, paint can pretty much mimic any of the dark colors of nature or any of the shade colors of nature. But he has, he has huge problems uh, representing luminous colors under the bright sunlight. There is no paint that will give you that luminosity, you know. Even the whitest white, as you guys know, this was mentioned before in class, even the whitest white is so, so much darker than the light of the sun. So paint, generally speaking, does not represent well uh, the light. It represents much better darkness. The old masters knew that. The old masters painted mostly with darker shades. And then they would leave little, small, super bright, super light accents. And because those little accents are surrounded by shade, visually, it creates an optical illusion and then it seems like those little pale accents are glowing. That's how they represented lights, the old masters, because they knew that pale colors in large quantities, it just, it just looks chalky. It doesn't look luminous. Any questions? Uh, no, Sangeeta, different acrylic brands, they have different sheen levels, as you can see here. I'm deliberately doing this so you guys can see the ones that are glossy or the ones that are matte. Another super glossy one uh, is that one there, the New Masters. Can you read that name? In duly known orange? Is that, is that how you say it? <laughs> um, I don't recommend it though because look at the number of stars. 
it only has two stars it means it's not as um, light fast as the colors that contain three stars like for example that one that has three stars so that's more light fast or the colors that contain the letter a capital I number one in uh, in uh, Roman in Latin okay that's the same as three stars it's very confusing because different makes will use different um, symbols to represent light fastness but that's a whole different lesson and we already spoke about it so I'm going to change the chapter any spectacular color I should be aware of uh, yes yes um, I don't know if this color is being made anymore or not. The Rembrandt Talons Orange. I believe it was discontinued. This one right here. But it had the most beautiful, beautiful granulation. Uh, it's kind of a warm color. It's, it's a bit like, although it's a bit brownish, it still looks really vivid. Because it's a deep, dark orange, but still vivid. Uh, again, when you make your own colors, they tend to granulate more. So notice uh, the mottled texture of this paint I made myself. You know, th this is the casein uh, mixed with Master Pigments Realgar Fine. Master Pigments is a brand that sells um, historical colors. Again, you can use them for iconography or traditional um, painting techniques. Now, next. And now we're entering um, truly, truly vivid, vivid colors. If you are looking for a really clashing orange, this is going to be hard to beat. Uh, made by Turner acrylic paints, you know, acrylic gouache. This one is spectacularly bright. So the Turner, the Turner permanent orange and the light fastness is just beautiful. You know, it's it's absolutely permanent, super, super vivid, um, strong colors. Also, the Turner Cadmium down here. Now, Sangeeta, you asked me about mediums. Can you see how the Turner Cadmium Orange cracked because it was painted thickly? I've got a little trick for you. And if you mix a little bit of acrylic medium to the Turner acrylic gouache paints then they will not crack okay so this is a trick that you can use my favorite medium let me take this out is called it's made by lasco and this is a totally flat medium it's called sirius acrylic medium it dries matte uh, so you can add a few drops of this onto your uh, Turner acrylic colors and that allows you to paint thickly uh, without the paint cracking. So that was just a little preview of what you can do with mediums. Just a little preview. Uh, in terms of bright reds, for example, just notice how Notice how the one at the bottom right corner, the Windsor Newton Cadmium Red Deep, is so much darker than the other Cadmium Reds, which you can see on this um, row. I don't think, generally, I'm a bit suspicious of buying too many colors. I mean, I bought all of these colors because I am a professional painter. I know what I'm doing. But if you are beginners, no way. You know, just get a few uh, primary colors and then you'll be able to um, to do the rest uh, yourselves. Now, next. If you have any questions about um, paints, let's go bright again. Let's go bright and vivid. And, and now we're entering such bright shades that uh, some of them are forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> now let's look first into all of these colors. This is a bit of a disaster, you know, to hold um, this, this book. It's got a horrible shape for the internet. This book was not made for the internet. 
This book was made to be seen live. Not good for the internet, Nelson. You shouldn't be showing this book. Okay, another brand on the top left corner, Pip Simmer, made in England. And uh, an interesting make of acrylic paints. If you want to go for extremes, because today's lesson is about extremes, I would say, I would say extreme glossiness, you go for Windsor Newton acrylics on this color. So the naphtal red light is extremely glossy. Let me try to get it on the camera. Can I show it to you? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, now you can see it. Look at the gloss level. So again, if you want gloss, the Windsor Newton acrylics, naphtal red light is very glossy. Mind you, the light fastness is just a two. So it's not very light fast. I don't recommend it. Another extremely glossy red is this one. Again, by Windsor Newton acrylics is the naphtal red medium. It's glossy. But again, the life light fastness is only a two. And look at these colors here. The colors that have an X are colors that are so fugitive, so fugitive that uh, you should not use them for fine arts. All right. So colors that are fugitive, Windsor Newton, Rose Mother Genuine, a big no. This paint will fade. You don't need it. You don't need it. You can get these shades much more light fast. For example, here, the Rembrandt Rose, three stars, you know, maximum light fastness, practically the same hue. And from this one, you can mix that one anyway. You know, you mix it. You don't need all of these things. Another color that is forbidden, and there's loads of them in the magenta spectrum, loads of colors uh, that I don't think you should use at all. One is by Turner Acrylics, the Turner Acrylic gouache, you know, the brand I love. They also do terrible colors. This one is very bad. So the Turner Carmine or Carmine Fugitive, don't use it. Read the label. Always reads the light fastness rating. Stay away from anything that is called opera red or opera rose or opera anything at all because these colors fade very quickly. They were not made for um, this type of colors called opera, opera pink, opera red, opera crimson. They were not made for painters. They were made for illustrators. Uh, these colors were developed just to get a super bright, vivid color to be photographically reproduced. And then that's it. It's the photograph that matters. It's not the original painting because this will fade very quickly. So don't get uh, opera colors. You've got a great brand called Prima Krill, which is an acrylic paint uh, made by Schmincke. The Germans usually do really good paints. And look at the light fastness, five stars. So how come this five stars relates to the three stars we saw before? I just told you that three stars was maximum light fastness. How come some brands have five stars? And this is the problem with um, art material industry. It's full of romance. Ah, welcome to this world, you know, of romance. So essentially different brands use different systems. Uh, in the Schmincke universe, colors are rated from zero to five. In, in, in the, in the um, Talons uh, or Windsor Newton universe, colors are rated from zero to three. So a five star by Primacryl is the equivalent to a three star by most of the other brands. I prefer this system of five stars because it's more accurate. You know, there's more, there are more different uh, layers of light fastness, more steps. So it is more accurate, but unfortunately, unfortunately, um, I cannot say that uh, that we have a conversation between the different brands. You know, they seem to be fighting all the time. Uh, yeah, more more nice and bright colors. Again, hard to see on camera. You'll have to believe me. 
you'll have to believe the teacher. Okay, this video is getting a bit boring, so let's make it more exciting now. I want to start with some amazing, amazing um, colors, like this violet here, look at the granulation on the paper, it's just the most beautiful texture. As you can see, it was made with casein, so I did it myself. That was a paint I ground myself. Look again, the Turner magenta is light, is not light fast, so I put an X on top. Any color with an X, just don't buy. Even if you like it on camera, do not use it, okay? Don't buy this, it's gonna fade. Don't buy that color either, it's gonna fade. Stay away from anything that is called fluo or fluorescent or day glow because those colors will fade necessarily. This is beautiful. Purpurite, it's, it's the stone, it's the genuine stone that has been ground. And every time you see a color called DS, that stands for Daniel Smith. So it's the brand of watercolors very beautiful granulation if you're into uh, granulation so this is the general uh, layout you guys can see if there's any color that catches your eye and you can just write down the names of a few of the colors and on this side um, we have a few more so Holbein Holbein, it's a Japanese brand of paints, extremely, extremely overpriced. So this is the Holbein. And I think I think it's overpriced just because it's imported, you know. I, I believe that in Japan they are not overpriced, but in Europe they cost a fortune. Why did I buy this Holbein? Because they sell a magenta that is light fast. That's the reason why. And usually magentas uh, tend to be fugitive in, in most of the other brands. Vallejo, it's a Spanish make and I love that one down there because of the granulation. So again, if you look at the texture that it makes on the paper, it's quite pleasant, it's quite uh, pretty. It's acrylic gouache. Um, how long did you leave these before rating them, Sangeeta? What do you mean by uh, leaving them or rating them? The rating of light fastness was not done by myself. The rating of the pigments, uh, it's supplied by the manufacturer and there's even international uh, color charts because chemists have to do tests that last for decades to see how a pigment performs. So I did not rate based on my own um, samples. I, sh I couldn't, it's not scientific to do so. Um, on the other hand, the automobile industry, the car paint industry, the coatings industry, it's the industry that uh, discovered more about light fastness in pigments. It's not art material industry, they don't know anything, you know. Essentially, what we know nowadays, it was taken from the automobile industry, colors that do not fade under the sun. So... Purpurite Genuine. Did I show you that one? I think I did, but it's so pretty that I'll show you again. <laughs> the granulation is just lovely. And this color is fully permanent because it has the capital one. Okay, it's it's fully light fast. It's the first rate color. Cobalt Violet. Beautiful granulation, very expensive colors. Everything that says cobalt will be expensive, but anything that says cobalt will also be light fast. So they're expensive and light fast. And because it's Holbein, they'll be triple expensive <laughs> because they're imported from Japan. All right? Now, next. Oh, some of these shades are so beautiful. I don't even know where to start. I don't know if I should show you. Shall I show you the purples now? Or shall I keep them for myself? We need a few secrets. Yeah? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Let us look at some of the purples. And from all the colors that we have on camera, 
these are some of the best in terms of granulation so I'm gradually going to zoom in uh, outstanding colors on this chart you're gonna get uh, lunar black Daniel Smith produces a range of watercolors which are called lunar like from the moon and these colors granulate immensely absolutely immensely I love them for what they are now look at the ingredients though pigment black 11 plus pigment violet 15 can you see it down there pigment black 11 plus pigment violet 15 pbk11 plus pv15 that means it's a mix you can do it yourself so if you buy a black called pigment black 11 and if you buy a violet that is written on this description pigment violet 15 uh, you can make your own mix another color that is quite spectacular uh, is this one the daniel smith cobalt blue violet this one up here and look at the duo tone the darks are blue and the lights are reddish this is just so beautiful and this is true amethyst again made by daniel smith you can even see the specks can you see the specks of the amethyst shining yes you can daniel smith in my opinion makes the best range of watercolor paints from any of the brands uh, in the market at the moment so if if there was one brand i would say has got the best paints daniel smith but again not for every colors uh yes sangeeta they are light nightscapes this kind of purplish uh shades and tones hi angela <laughs> now renato you told me not to publish anything about the bark course until it's ready i'm obeying you you know better about these things than i do uh you know in my opinion so guys in my opinion um i would i would stream everything all over facebook and youtube and so on before the course is ready <laughs> i would start announcing I you know i would start throwing fireworks amazing course right and renato said and said very wisely don't do it you know you need to have the course ready before you start uh sending out uh promotional videos and things like that okay so i'm following your advice renato no bark course okay question for the class what does cobalt stand for it stands for expensive <laughs> and it stands for usually it stands for granulating colors because cobalt is a heavy metal it's heavy so it tends to sediment onto the texture and grooves of the paper okay cobalt is also a very rare element so paints made from cobalt are expensive Daniel Smith has got the most beautiful cobalt violet and again the the thing with cobalt paints is that they're extremely light fast extremely extremely light fast and now are you ready to see some of the most expensive pigments in history we're entering the kingdom of the blues and I'm going to show you now I'm going to show you now if you want granulation crazy granulation like over the top texture I love it that's that's the page to go for some of this granulation is just so spectacular that that it looks like somebody just glued a gritty sand colored sand onto the paper and so elizabeth hi <laughs> hi liz you're good um the paint i the the paper i used most of these samples were onto uh, saunders waterford which is an english make of watercolor paper uh, i tried to paint all of the samples onto the same batch of saunders waterford watercolor papers but it was impossible because um, eventually I had to buy new sheets to carry on and different batches will have slightly different textures but it's on Sa Saunders Waterford now let's get started with um, where am I 
let's get started with standard Windsor Newton colors, cobalt blue, lovely granulation, but now compare it with the crazy, crazy, crazy three colors that I did myself down here. Sorry, the Daniel Smith I didn't. This one is from the um, from the shop. This is Smalt Genuine. It's from the tube. Daniel Smith also sells Smalt, which was a medieval Renaissance uh, pigment. But look at the these ones here, which I bought uh, from Carnelison. You know the art shop next to the British Museum in London. I bought some Smalt, and I grinded it onto casein. You've got two shades. You've got the light, and you have the dark shade absolutely fascinating textures and these textures were self-made so I was not trying to make the paint texture I just apply the wash and it would naturally um, sediment now look at these ones wow any of these colors are crazy 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 textured you are looking into some um, lapis lazuli so this first one is azurite this is also azurite they're both by uh, old masters um, it's like old masters pigments and it's sold by a company called master pigments <laughs> Not surprisingly and then you have different ranges of azurite so as you go as you go lighter and lighter it's like it's all azurite but it's just different ways of of making it okay Azurite was a slightly cheaper substitute for lapis lazuli. So when you are when you are looking at um, expensive blues in painting, what many artists would do is that first they would apply a layer or two of azurite because it was cheaper and it was blue. And after it's dry, they would apply on top the more expensive lapis lazuli. Okay? Now, this is Daniel Smith Azurite Genuine. Uh, I love Daniel Smith, but I don't like this blue at all. It's so dull and gray. I much, much, much prefer the handmade batches, you know, from uh, from Master Pigments. Much, much, much prefer. Uh, but Daniel Smith has got some surprising pigments. Look at this one with lots of specks and sparkles. It's called Kyanite. That's a stone beautiful beautiful um grayish muted uh, naturally sparkling pigments and now you are looking at lapis lazuli the most expensive shades is this one it's called fra angelico shade when you're buying lapis lazuli if they claim this is fra angelico that means it's going to cost you money and then you've got the first grade, which is not as expensive as the Fra Angelico shade. And then it gets cheaper. This is not as good. Um, the Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli, it's again very dull compared to the, to the homemade batches that I did myself from uh, um, Master Pigments. So it's again very dull. But to surprise us, they do have Sodalite which is again another stone that they ground and it creates a beautiful uh, granulation so essentially I don't think you have a um, a brand that sells uh, lapis lazuli ready-made with a very good um, quality unfortunately unfortunately but you can make it yourselves you know like I was telling you you can make it yourselves and now let's enter onto the modern version of lapis lazuli much 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 bluer than true lapis and much 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 cheaper is just ultramarine blue so thank goodness for modern chemistry ultramarine blue has got the same chemical composition of lapis lazuli but without the impurities that come mixed with the lapis. It's, it's, it's a chemically pure, chemically pure uh, version of that blue. And if you look, it's made on the lab and it's, it's very cheap actually. You can buy ultramarine blue. Now, if you look at the colors, in terms of outstanding colors, I would say, let me just have a look at them direct. 
I would say that if you're going for granulation, if you are going for granulation, then this uh, Windsor & Newton French Ultramarine has got a really nice texture. It's got a lovely, lovely uh, granulation on the paper. Or this spectacular acrylic paint by Golden, so Golden Ultramarine Blue, if you dilute it like a watercolor, it dries mottled and textured. It's really beautiful too. Compare it, for example, the texture of this blue with the flatness of that blue, the Windsor Newton acrylics as well. They're both acrylic paints. They're both ultramarine. They're both the same pigment, pigment blue 29. But look how the golden is so textured and mottled and how the Windsor Newton is so flat and smooth. All right, and somewhere in between, you've got the Primacryl. It's not as textured as Golden, but it's not as smooth as Windsor & Newton. Um, Ara, by comparison, looks extremely washed out. It just doesn't seem to have as much pigment as the other brands. It's not as densely colored. Um, as usual, Turner, Turner acrylics have got really vibrant colors. It's a lighter ultramarine than any of the other ultramarines you see on this page. I don't know if you can see that, but this is actually a lighter shade of blue. I can show you from close up. If you compare this blue with the one next door, which is much darker, the last core, that's, that's very easy to see the difference, okay? Um, so I've got another question from Elizabeth. Which type of Saunders watercolor paper? No, it's just a medium grain. So it's neither uh, hot pressed, neither the rough. So it's indeed the cold pressed, as they call. You know, it's the medium grain. Now, we are going to enter a new shade of blue. We are starting to go slightly uh, greener, so slightly more cyan. And here are three shades to show you. If there is a brand that is quite spectacular and affordable, it's called Tri Art. It's an acrylic made in Canada. It's just glorious. They're as good as golden paints, but they're much cheaper. You know, Tri Art. I highly, highly recommend it. And look at the gloss level, it's just absolutely beautiful. Equally glossy is again the new Masters Old Delft Blue. Super glossy. If you're going for gloss, that's the brand to go for. Let me show you now the other page where all these wonderful colors uh, are there for you to see. So again, look at, for example, this Windsor & Newton Prussian blue, there's hardly any texture at all on the paper. And compare it with the granulation that you would get, for example, from a golden cobalt blue, or even more, even more spectacularly, from this blue Verditer that I bought at Cornelison's and I ground myself with casein. So if you want texture, sometimes you have to make your own paints. Does that make sense? Let me just check if there's any more uh, questions. I've got, I've got a very silent crowd. Very silent crowd. Are you guys hearing me? Uh, please click either a like or. Li oh, I've got a, I've got a, th a thing to suggest. The icon you click, the emoticon, it's the feeling you're gonna get for the rest of the month. And when I say the month is next month. So if you click the angry, you're going to be angry. You know, if you click love, you're going to feel love. <laughs> now, next, 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 next. Uh, where shall we go? Oh, these are absolutely uh, stunning. Very vivid primary blues. Any of those two, they're all good. So Turner Taylor Blue or the Holbein the Primary Scion, they're both the same pigment, pigment blue 15, and they're both um, equally vibrant and blue, 
okay so recommended paints let me just go a bit nearer so you can see this is the Holbein Holbein stands for expensive because it's imported and Turner although it also comes from Japan it's not as expensive I don't know why you know it makes no sense because they're both imported from uh, Japan look at this blues now again granulation if you want roughness and granulation you can see straight away the two colors that granulate it's the Daniel Smith lunar blue look at that it's really rough and and uh, super textured and another color that granulates is this one it's the one I did myself it's the Cornelis and manganese blue that I did myself with casein that creates a lovely texture if you don't want texture then use any of the other colors in this chart uh, indeed Diana <laughs> writing writing the stick time so you need um, yeah you need uh, silence you need attention now whose favorite who's who in this group loves turquoise I know that the most popular color in the world is blue but I also know that a lot of people uh, are having summer summer blues summer blues you miss the Sun we can't travel because of COVID so these lovely turquoise colors that remind you of um, a tropical sea you know a tropical distant sea very distant sea in cold cold England it's extremely cold today in London so when you guys see this video in the future you know that I was moaning about the weather <laughs> as one should <laughs> um, the bluest blue this, this is just so beautiful look I'm gonna show you a few colors for example the Turner Cypress Turner acrylic gouache it's a duotone can you see it gets greener in the lights and it's much bluer in the darks which is really nice this cascade green by Daniel Smith it's spectacularly duotone it's green in the darks and it's blue in the lights absolutely beautiful and then you've got some some colors that are just you know any of those are good in terms of vibrancy they're all quite similar uh, you also have the cobalt turquoise by Daniel Smith which is a much darker shade of green uh, you don't need it you can mix this color yourself and cobalt stands for what expensive so only by uh, cobalt colors if there's a specific shade you need and you can't do it uh, by any other means you know otherwise it's just expensive yeah everybody's now reacting to turquoise was that because of my question or because you do miss turquoise oceans you know turquoise seas we are now entering the greens and I will try I will try to finish this lesson uh, by we won't have time I won't be able to do the whole book it's just to give you an idea again observe and see which are the colors that you want for yourselves okay if you're going for granulation it's again the master pigments hands down malachite this is real malachite by the way hands down these are the most textured paints of the whole chart okay and you have extremely smooth colors as well like De Laroni, for example uh, it dries extremely flat or the Turner emerald green it by by Turner acrylics it also dries flat if you want texture and mottled then you need real malachite and you grind it yourself with paint okay I even wrote low tinting strength it mixes badly with water uh, which is true these pigments behaved almost like sand so as I was grinding it you know on the on the pestle and mortar um, it was just like trying to mix sand uh, and water now we can still enter some green earths 
And if everybody is okay, let's extend the lesson for about five or ten minutes because I want to show you some of the other colors I have in here. Um, again, cobalt, sorry, cobalt is going to stand for expensive. And you don't need this type of colors because it's not a vibrant, bright color. It's very easy to mix. Muted colors are easy to mix. Unless you want this specific type of granulation, then yes, you need those paints. But if it's just to match a hue, you don't need it, okay? A bit more vibrant, uh, yellower colors. Careful with some paints like this one. It only has one star of light fast rating. That's very low. So I wouldn't buy the Turner Dandelion. And again, I don't understand because this color is so easy to mix with light fast pigments. Why would they sell a color that is fugitive is beyond my understanding. I just don't see the reason why at all. Next. Oh, these are beautiful. These are really beautiful. We are now entering the kingdom of the green earths. These are, these are natural, natural soil colors. They come from different parts of the world, usually from Cyprus or Czech Republic. Uh, some parts of Italy as well and Turkey. Those countries have green earths. It's also called Terra Verde. And let's get started here. So, um, Bohemian Earth from Czech Republic. It's very prized for underpainting skin tones, flesh tones. This is an imitation version, but uh, it's similar in shades. Now, if you go around and round and round, look at this wonderful undersea green right here, which is a multicolored uh, fleck appearance. So you've got brown, you've got green, you almost have blues in the darks. Very, very beautiful. This paint is used in icon painting. Epidote, Earth, it's Russian. As far as I remember, this one came from Russia and it was traditionally used for medieval icon paintings. Then you have the Terra Verde and the modern synthetic green color, which is called Perilene Green. Um, I want to show you one thing. A lot of green earths, they became, how can I say, you can't say extinct for an earth, <laughs> but exhausted, you know, the deposits. You don't have good green earths anymore like you used to have in the past. They're still available, but they're getting rarer and rarer. But companies like Kramer or Daniel Smith, they produce some really amazing green earths. This is Saladonite, literally. And I can't even read that. Zoisite? And it's a genuine stone again, made by Daniel Smith, that was ground into a paint. Extremely light, fast colors. Green earths, you know? Then you've got all sorts of... Look at that. Can you read this one? Volkonskoit. That's, that's Russian. It comes from a volcano somewhere in Russia. Incredible granulation and it's again sold by Master Pigments. Cornelison makes the nicest green um, earth, the Terra Verde, that I've ever seen. It's sold as a pigment and then you make your own paint. And look, when it's glossy, it's super dark. When it's matte, it's super light. So that shows the difference between gloss and uh, light. And just to complete, the greens. You've got, this is a, a synthetic modern pigment, very transparent, uh, irgazine yellow. But the appetite is again a stone that Daniel Smith ground uh, to make this spectacular paint. Really spectacular uh, paints. I love natural colors just as much as I love synthetic ones, you know. I'm not fussy about those things. Um, sky tones. So I've got a question for um, Elena. Hi, uh, Nelson. Could you please help? I will try. I will try. And you have a large selection of green earths and yellows, Elena. Yes, they're beautiful. 
uh, green earths are just spectacular and, and they're getting rarer. They're getting counterfeit as well. So sometimes you buy a green earth, it's meant to be the natural pigment and it's not. <laughs> has been has been spiked with some artificial green uh, mixes by, by some manufacturers, you know. So make sure you buy it from a reputable manufacturer because sometimes they're spiked with a, with a fake thing. Now, you asked Elena uh, which suggestions of watercolors to take with you to Greece and paint sea and sky tones and how many. You don't need a lot. If you want to paint sky, um, the sky in Greece is absolutely beautiful. You need a very, very bright blue, very bright, because you can always uh, dull your colors. Remember, it's better to have a color that is too bright, too vivid, you know, too chromatic, too saturated, than having something that is too dull. Let's look at them, and then I'm going back to the browns where we were, but let's quickly look at the blues, and I will tell you which ones are the brightest here uh, in reality when I'm looking at the, you know, when I'm looking at the, um, the color chart directly. The brightest ultramarine, that I see here on this chart, it's going to be made by Turner. Turner Acrylic Gouache. And they make a really, really bright ultramarine blue. You don't need it for the skies of Greece unless you are painting dusk, when the sky turns darker and more ultramarine, you know? Otherwise, you won't need it. For daytime, you want to go instead of ultramarines, you want to go towards cobalt blues. So now I'm looking at the cobalt, and to be fair, none of the cobalt blues are that bright. <sighs> this is a problem. It's a weak color we have. Uh, I'd say from the cobalt blues, the bluest one is the one made by Golden Acrylics. So Golden Acrylics makes a really um, bluer cobalt blue. Same with Turner. Turner makes a decent cobalt blue. But there's an issue with the Turner version. It only has two stars of light fastness. And it's also a mix of pigments. You can do the mix yourself. I prefer the, the, the golden cobalt blue because it's one single pigment and it's maximum light fastness. So for cobalt blues, I think we're sorted. Go for golden acrylics. Then we are entering the science. A bright, bright, bright blue sky. Oh, I've got a few suggestions for you, Elena, for the bright blue skies of Greece. I'd say, I'd say that any of those two is a must on your palette. Just pick one. You know, either the Holbein acrylic gouache, primary cyan, or the Turner uh, Taylor blue. These are very vivid um, primary cyan blues. But then if you want to go even brighter, even brighter, these colors are a must. Any of these three, let me just go nearer. Manganese blue is the color you want to get. You know, either you get your own pigment by Cornelison and you mix it yourself, the first example, or you buy the Daniel Smith manganese blue or you buy the Windsor Newton manganese blue uh, hue. They're both a hue, by the way, the manganese blue by Daniel Smith or by Windsor Newton. So they're an imitation. The one here by Cornelison is the real deal. But in terms of vibrancy, they're all quite similar. It's just one is a bit darker than the other. So you need manganese blue for the skies of Greece. And finally, because you also spoke of water, uh, you need very, very strong turquoise colors. And for turquoise... Sorry, let me just see. Hmm. They're all, they're all pretty good, I'd say. The, the turquoise colors I have on the top row, they're all pretty decent. Not the bottom one, okay? The top one. So any, any of these uh, four is good. Any of these four. So you've got the pigment by Kramer and then you make your own paints. Or you can buy ready-made cobalt teal by Golden, you know. Windsor Newton also makes a beautiful uh, turquoise cobalt light. 
And finally, Dan Daniel Smith makes a great watercolor, Cobalt Teal Blue. Any, any of these four is good. And then, if you want to be a little bit um, stranger, you can get Dioptase <laughs> by Kramer. <laughs> no, don't get it. It's not as light fast, you know. And Copper Blue, I'm also not sure about the light fastness. The Turner has got this beautiful barrel green, which is very bright, but it's a mix. It's a mix of pigments, and usually I advocate do not buy mixes. Get instead a single pigment. This one is just pigment green 36 or pigment green uh, 50 in the other three examples. It's better if you buy a single pigment and then you make your own mixes. All right, I think this was covered. It was a long lesson on uh, which blues and greens to get for Greece. But I hope it was helpful, Elena. Let me know if you have more questions, okay? I appreciate your questions. And we were about to enter the kingdom of the um, yellow browns. So, um, an amazing color. Oh, ah, here it is. This is one of the glossiest colors, again, in on my color chart. Look at the gloss level. Incredible. It's really like varnished. It's made by Golden Acrylics. Very transparent color. It's called uh, Nickel Azo Yellow. A very beautiful see-through uh, brown yellow. It's got a much higher um, tinting strength than the yellow ochres, which I'm going to show you uh, next. So these are some yellow ochres. They're usually weaker in terms of po coloring power. And, um, and you've got... Um, You've got some really, really beautiful uh, Indian yellows, for example. This is an imitation because the real Indian yellow, some people say it's cow's urine. <laughs> I never um, I never tested it, so I don't know if it's cow's urine. The legend says it is. It's a beautiful color, Indian yellow. Beautiful for its transparency. You can glaze with it. Now, in terms of gloss levels, because I don't want you to lose time, let's go straight to the point. If you want a really glossy, a kind of brownish, still a bit yellowish, you've got this really, really, really shiny, golden, transparent yellow iron oxide. That's very glossy. Let me try to get the sheen. There it is. Can you see on camera? Very, very glossy paint. Compare it to the matteness of uh, any of the other colors, you know. This one is much glossier. It's again a transparent color. If you're going for granulation in these hues, then I recommend this one by Daniel Smith, the Goethite Brown. It's again a natural stone that has been ground uh, to make paint. Generally speaking, natural stones, when you grind them, uh, they tend to granulate more then uh, oh super glossy can i show you one of the glossiest paints i have this is super glossy it's made by golden queen acridon burnt orange super super glossy uh rust red brown and i think the paint is transparent the brand actually says that it's semi-opaque. Uh, I don't believe them. Believe me, don't believe the brands, okay? Super, super glossy paint. So don't forget uh, that brand if, you're, if you want to paint with thick, glossy acrylics. Of course, the moment you dilute and you use them as watercolor, they'll dry matte. And now I've got these rust colors. Again, just write down the ones that appeal to you the most. So it saves you thousands of pounds buying them all. You don't need them. Just get two or three colors, you know? The ones that you really love. Let's go straight to exceptional paints. If you want maximum granulation, this is the one to go for. Kramer Translucent Red Medium. Uh, it's actually rust, it's iron oxide. If you want maximum transparency, then you go for the, this Rembrandt 
The Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red is the most transparent I have together with this one here, the Queen Acridon Sienna made by Daniel Smith watercolors. That's also super transparent for glazing. If you want opaque colors, the opposite of transparent, then uh, you would use, for example, that one instead. You see, there's no see-through. The Turner Burnt Sienna covers really well. It's not see-through. So these are the most outstanding from the uh, palette. I do like the Lunar Earth by, um, by Daniel Smith again. Beautiful granulation, sorry. It's hard to point to things in reverse, you know, because the camera does a mirror effect. Uh, beautiful granulation, Daniel Smith watercolors, Lunar Earth. The whole range of Daniel Smith that says Lunar, it means it's, um, it's granulating. Now, finally, we're almost reaching the end of the book. And I might have I might have to interrupt the lesson at any time, but let's try to do this right. Again, for um, for granulation, if you want granulation, I would say some outstanding ones are this yellowish brown made by Kremer pigments, and then you mix your own paint, or this one here, also made by Kremer pigments and then you mix your own paint. But if you want something ready-made and beautiful, you've got the Daniel Smith burnt tiger's eye. This is real tiger's eye, you know, the stone. is genuine, as they say. If they say genuine, I believe them. Um, this is the burnt version, and this one is the raw version before going to the oven, you know? Before roast and after it's roast. It's like coffee beans. It's, it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> and uh, can you read this name? Cyclorite? Cyclorite Genuine? I think that's how you read. It's another stone that also granulates beautifully. And hematite. This hematite is so stunning because it's again a multicolored effect. It's more orangey in the mid-tones and it's slightly more purplish in the darker uh, shades. Made by Daniel Smith watercolors and we are almost completing the lessons in terms of color how many pages do i have bear with me for three minutes and i think we can go through uh the flat colors that i was using now next color these are still browns an amazing um it's an amazing collection, you know, I'm really proud of all the samples I got. Look at the, the one on the top right corner, the Vallejo. Look at the really strange streaks that it made with the application of water. This is great, though, for contemporary art, you know, if you want these strange streaks of white, then you get the Vallejo acrylic gouache burnt sienna. In terms of granulation, though, if you want maximum granulation, you probably would go for the Kremer pigments, the pink color deep, Potter's pink, and then you make your own paint. And see, this one granulates a lot, the dark, and the lighter version granulates less. There's another one that granulates a lot here. It's the Kremer Caput Mortum Hematite Dark, and then you make your own paint. We are almost ending. I'm now on the browns. Some really beautiful, beautiful colors. Look at this spectacular, multicolored Daniel Smith shadow violet, where the lights are more reddish and the shadows are green. Isn't that so beautiful? It's one single paint, you know. Of course, it's a mix of pigments, but I love how the color separates. Same with the moon glow the Daniel Smith watercolor, where you have the lights being pinkish and the shadows being greenish. Again, cameras will distort uh, the color. For absolute transparency, I would say the Windsor Newton Perylene Violet is the most transparent color here for glazing, together 
together with Windsor Newton, Perlin, Maroon. So those two are the most transparent see-through watercolors I have on this page. Now Daniel Smith makes a very beautiful hematite violet genuine, which is again a little bit dual tone, not as much as the previous ones. And that's a very nice one. This paint here, the the, um, the Clearwell Caves, you know, Dean Forest in England, they sell the pigment. So I made my own paint from um, earth that came from Dean Forest. It's nice, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice paint. Um, it's always fun to experiment making your own paints. All right, we are now reaching the most important color in watercolor and I'm going to be controversial on purpose. Black. Who said you can't use black? Only ignorant people, you know? Not real painters. Real painters know that different shades of black create radically different uh, effects that cannot be emulated by any other mean. And that's why we need black pigments, because they, they create certain textures or certain effects that you cannot do by mixing your own um, black. So let's start with these pre-made uh, blacks over here. In terms of gloss, in terms of gloss, you've got a super, super shiny one made by New Masters. The carbon, the carbon black by New Masters is very glossy. It's acrylic paints. And then you've got uh, Culture Hustle. They released a paint that they said was the blackest black in the world. Well, it's not. It was overpriced. And I was very disappointed with this one. You know, um, for example, the Turner Mars black right next to it is already darker. I don't know if you can see. The Turner Mars Black has got a beautiful granulation as well. So you can see the texture on the paper, very nice. But if you are going for the blackest black that I have in here, it's the Jet Black by Turner Acrylic Gouache. I mean, that's really dark. That's really, really black. It's blacker than uh, any of the other blacks I have here. Together, it's not the only one though, together with this black I made myself, which is, I bought uh, at Cornelison's, it's ivory black, and then I mixed my own paint. So the other blacks are not as dark than those two. In terms of granulation, you've got some special ones. So let's start with this, very beautiful granulation. This is golden Mars black acrylics. It granulates beautifully when it's uh, diluted. This one is very interesting. Um, Mars Black by Sennelier Pigments. Uh, it creates a nice spec. It's almost like a drawing. I don't know if you can see that. It, it, it behaves almost like the texture of pencil on paper. This is an amazing granulation as well. Uh, Master Pigments, Vivianite. I bought the Vivianite Blue Medium, which is a stone. And then I made my own paint. And it says here, use size because this paint behaves better when it's applied uh, with gelatin. You know, you warm up gelatin and you use as a size. You've got Spinel Blacks, which is a very rare pigment, um, and so on, so on, so on. Now, let me... We're almost ending today's lesson. Oh, we're done for today. Because then what you have is things like um, metallic, iridescent, etc., which will be... Um, a different lesson, you know, we're not gonna waste time today with these, although they're lovely But yeah, that's not the topic of today's lesson So thank you for attending this lesson. I wasn't feeling very well like I told you Write down some notes now, you know which paints to buy if you're painting with uh, diluted acrylics or with uh, watercolors I hope this was useful and be um, I'm, I've got a I've got some oh yes Sangit it's like melting chocolate of course you're talking about the browns we saw before they're spectacular 
And indeed, Diane, what would happen to Caravaggio, Zurbaran, and all of the Spanish friends if they didn't use black pigment? Indeed, indeed. So um, thank you for attending the lesson. Remember to share this. Guys, in England, almost nobody shares. When I do my lessons in Portuguese, people are so grateful, maybe because they're less spoiled by by option, you know. They're so grateful that literally everybody shares. I've got 60, 80 shares at a time. In England, you watch it, you take what you want, and then you shut down the computer. Not good. So, bad karma, bad karma. And remember, the button you press is the button you're gonna get next month, you know. You can press the angry, you can press the laughing, you can press the love or the like. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next Sunday, okay? And I'll keep my secrets about the bark course. Renato, only you have seen what I'm working on, and even you have not seen it all. I've got better drawings to show you. You guys take care, okay? Goodbye. Ciao.